Components are the visual reusable building blocks to design pages in XM Cloud. So let's build our first component for the company project, comparing the different ways that XM Cloud has to offer. In this video, we will start with the XM Cloud component builder, exploring the no-code approach, connecting an XM Cloud data source and styling the component based on the requirements. Until now, the development team has created an environment and laid all the groundwork so the website creation can start. The XM Cloud Component Builder offers a no to low code approach to build components and connecting data sources from XM Cloud, Content Hub 1, but also other sources to it. This is a very simple approach so that also marketers can build their own components. For more complex scenarios, components can also be coded. In this video, I'm building a new component from ground up without writing a single line of code. I will apply the styling that has been prepared up front by a UI designer to make it look pixel perfect. As I want to use this component as UI, utilizing content from Maxim Cloud, I will also map a data source to the component. Last but not least, we will create a dedicated UI version of the component optimized for mobile devices. Let's start with the requirements. We start with something simple just to get into the flow. The first component we want to build is the text teaser component. It comes in a two column layout being centered with a max width of 1320 pixels. Within the first column, there is a headline H2 and a headline H3 element. In the second column, there is a paragraph text which is formatted. So probably something that we can handle by a rich text editor. The fonts being used is Roboto for the headlines and Open Sans for the paragraph text. Starting in XM Cloud, we navigate to Tools and XM Cloud Components. You can see that there are already some components available. To structure the components a bit, we can use collections. That helps using navigating the components in the Component Builder, but also later in Pages. Let's name this collection Basic Components. Within this new collection, we create the new component called Text Teaser. We can now add elements to the canvas or section as it is named in the builder. By clicking into the section, we get the default grid being displayed. This can be adjusted on the pane at the right side of the screen. We leave the grid as is for now. I can create a new area on the screen by simply pressing and dragging my mouse at the same time. By default, it creates a block element which I can directly change to a card. This will become my left column. I create a second card as my right column. When clicking on the Add Element button, I can see all elements that are currently available. I first select Heading 2 and click where I want to add it. Next, add a Heading 3 element. And in the second column, I add a Paragraph element. Let me add some dummy text to it. That looks already good, but this is not the exact styling that was requested. The UI designer or front-end specialist has already prepared the styling for the component, so we can apply that to the text teaser. In order to stay consistent with corporate design, XM Cloud Components allows to prepare all relevant styles up front and bundle these in so-called themes. If you want to know more about styling components, we have another video going in more depth with this topic. On the top right of the component, I click on the Theme Switcher. The current applied theme is the Light Theme. The theme that has been prepared is already listed at the bottom. I apply the company theme and yes. It looks much better now. The paragraph could require some more padding at the bottom and also the list icons are not yet as they should be. Let's start with the list icons. In general, XM Cloud Components allow us to use custom icons in text elements. We can either reference them using a URL or upload them to XM Cloud Components. I choose one from my local file storage and upload it. You can see that the list item keeps the original disk symbol and adds the icon at the start of the text. 
As XMCloud Components does not support custom list icons at the moment, we have to decide if we either go with the default ones or turn this into a paragraph instead. I'll turn this into a paragraph and I'll add a blank in between and it looks close to what we wanted to achieve. I'll repeat the steps for the other two elements as well. The paragraph does not have the advantages of a list element. So at this very moment we have to decide which is the best option to cover our requirements. Last thing to solve is the missing gap. Here we can use spacer elements. I can add a spacer element after my first paragraph and choose the padding or gap. Based on the design I need a margin bottom of 16 pixels. I can choose the gaps from a list. I'll repeat that for the other spacer element as well. Now I stage the component. This way it is available in pages to be used. Now let's check the component in pages. I'll open the pages editor which loads my home page. As the component is staged I can see it in the component list and I can drag it onto my canvas. Also that looks good as expected. Axon Cloud components can be used to centrally manage the content of our components and use those components in different apps, for example in your website managed with Axon Cloud pages, as seen here. Now I have a component that I can centrally manage from Axon Cloud components. But we wanted to reuse the component as UI building block for the page designs and show different content managed in Axon Cloud. Modeling data for particular requirements in XM Cloud is usually done by developers, even though it does not necessarily require coding. The developer has already prepared the data model for us and configured it to be used by the component builder. If you want to know more about the steps to create the data model or template, we have another video for you. To map the data source fields to the component, we navigate back to the component builder. So let's first ensure that the new data source is available in the component builder. In the data source section I can find the text teaser data source now listed at the bottom of the page. Great. Currently I use static data in XM Cloud components, but I can also map the data to a data source template. Therefore I need to select first the headline to field. On the right side I can choose to set the text from a static to a map value. First, I need to select the data source template from the list of available templates. I select the text teaser template. I can preview what fields are available. Now I click on next to actually select the field from the template that should be mapped to the component field. I select headline and complete the mapping process. I repeat the steps for my headline 3. I set the text to the mapped text teaser template and select the subheadline field. Last but not least I need to map the rich text field. When I copied my content from the HTML design to the component several elements were created automatically. All of the fields are paragraphs so if I map my content field to the paragraph I can see that it does not resolve the formatting coming from the XM Cloud rich text editor. As a rich text field is returning HTML and paragraphs strip off many sorts of HTML formatting, I remove all paragraphs and I add an HTML block element. This one I map to the content field from my template. And complete. Let's restage the component to make the change available in pages. In pages I can see that the component I added before is blank as it requires now a data source that has not been set. I remove the component and add it again. Now it is asking me for a data source. Let me select the data source I created before. So I navigate to my site, data, text teasers, text teaser 1. Yay! So the content appears in the component using my design. Just the design of the list item icons are still disks instead of my custom icon. This can be changed by developers through styling in the app. When I simulate the device width of tablet and mobile I can see that the mobile version seems to be very squished. 
What we need to do is provide a mobile version of the component that fits better to the smaller resolution. So let's take a look at the mobile design we're aiming at. We have 60 pixels padding at the top and H2 and H3 are separated by 20 pixels margin. Below the headline 3 we have an 8 pixels of margin bottom and the paragraph text starts with 24 pixels padding top and ends with 60 pixels padding bottom. To show different designs for different breakpoints, XM Cloud Components uses versions. So let me create a new version. I add a new block to it, which is just an outer diff. It helps us keeping the elements in line. Next I add a card for my headlines and another card for my HTML block. I add the headline 2 to the first card as well as the headline 3. Now I add the HTML block to the second card. Next I need to map my template to the text elements. For headline 2 I use the headline field again. Notice that I do not have to specify the template again as this is set with my first version already. For headline 3 I map the subheadline and for my mobile version HTML block I map the content field. Now I apply the right theme again which is my company theme. I need to tell components what version should be used when. So on the first version I deselect the small and extra small breakpoints. On the second version I only select these two, meaning the small and the extra small version. Let's rework some of the styles. The 60 pixels top and bottom padding of the section were already set with the theme, also the padding left and right. However, the first card requires 8 pixels of padding bottom. The second card requires a top padding of 20 pixels. Seems I cannot select the first card directly, so from any element I can always navigate to the parent or child elements using the bottom toolbar. So I select the parent card and set the spacing. As I only want to adjust the bottom padding, I select the All Custom tab and set the 8 pixels bottom padding. For the second card, I also navigate to set the spacing directly on the elements. I switch to the All Custom tab again and set the top padding to 20 pixels. Let's stage the changes so I can validate it in Pages. Let me first reload the Pages editor so the changes take effect. When I switch to tablet, there is no change as expected. But when I switch to the mobile preview, I can see my new version being shown. This is what we wanted to achieve with this tutorial. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss further content from our Discover SiteQuiz channel. Leave a comment if you have questions or any remarks. See you next time.